Avengers Endgame. I'm Khaleesi Grimes82. Before I break down this episode, this review, I just want to shout out one thing for you fangirls that haven't seen the film yet. Spoilers! Oh, I don't feel so good, Mr. Stark. That's because you're heavy from eating too many spoilers. And there's going to be a lot of them on this episode that I'm going to regurgitate for you. So if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame, run out and see the movie. Come back in three hours and 30 minutes and watch this. The movie's only three hours long, but I assume you don't walk outside and the theater's like right next to you. Wouldn't <laughs> that be awesome though? You're like, honey, I'm gonna go to the movies. <laughs> Open the door. <laughs> Open the door to the theater. One for Avengers Endgame, please. <laughs> We're like 30 seconds into this and I already can't stand myself. For those of you that don't know, Avengers Infinity War was the movie that came out right before this one. And the stakes were so high, they were out of this world. Literally. It's in space. Bottom line is a few Avengers screwed the pooch here. Uh, primarily Star-Lord? Who's dead? Congratulations. Just played yourself. And Thor who instead of going for the throat like he should have against Thanos, he went for the chest. He went for the breast and Thanos did it best. Erased half of the earth, dead, instantly turned to ash, Gonzo. Movie ends with him on his farm, eating some food, watching a sunset, has a scarecrow, he's got some armor out there. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, bada penis. Here we are, a painstakingly long wait. A year later, and we're at Endgame. For those of you that don't know, in Avengers Infinity War, at one point or another, Doctor Strange says to Tony Stark, we are in the Endgame now. Clearly a nod, clearly a wink, to this film and the title that they chose. Did they choose the title after Doctor Strange said that line? Did they have a plan the whole time? Well, it is the Russo brothers, it is Kevin Feige. I think they did. I think they planned this. I think they did. And it's great. There's so much to unpack here. First off, we start at Hawkeye's ranch. Remember how I wanted that Hawkeye on the ranch movie? We kind of get it a little bit. He, he teaches his daughter some archery. Some of the boys are playing catch. They're not very good. I saw a kid like straight up miss it like four feet over his head. The kid is garbage. He doesn't have his dad's eyesight. He must have Velma's because his, his, his wife in the movie uh, plays Velma in the live action Scooby-Doo movies and she wears glasses. So kind of a deep cut, but I'm a nerd, I'm a geek, subscribe. Cool beans. So after he watches them all die, he's a little pissed, he, uh, understandably. And he goes on a killing spree, mainly off camera, but he's, he's killing a lot of uh, Asians. Is that appropriate to say? We get Paul Ageless Rudd back. He comes out of the quantum realm. He was there the whole time. He was trapped inside the quantum realm while the snap happened. So he comes out and it's five years later, meaning his little daughter is five years older. It's insanity. And he has to deal with that fallout. It's just, it's, it's so heartbreaking. My heart literally broke as I watched the film. True story, they had to rush me to the hospital, uh, which was not ideal because I missed quite a large portion of the film there in the middle. While they kind of like humpty dumpty my heart back together and the doc's like, we cannot let you leave right now. And I'm laying on the bed, like on my deathbed. I'm like, fuck you, I gotta get back to this movie. So I took a scalpel, I stabbed him in the throat. Blood is everywhere. The nurse is looking, she throws up in the corner. I hop the table, I swift kick her in the face. I Tony Stark flip over the other orderly, elbow him to the throat, he's down. And as he's on the ground, I'm like, I guess I went for the head this time. And I wink at him, then I kick him in the face. He has no idea the context. I put on a doctor's coat. I run out of the building. I got shit hanging from me, cords and everything. You know, I got one of those sacks of fluid I'm running with. That thing blows open halfway. Another person slips, breaks their neck. They're dead, presumably. I don't care. I don't have time. I keep sprinting for that door. And up ahead, I see a couple people. They're cops, I think. They have guns. I assume they're cops. They could have been 
been high schoolers for all I know, because, you know, school shootings. And they're like, stop right there, you piece of shit. And I'm like, we're in the end game now, motherfucker. <laughs> I punch him in the face, break his jaw. I poly pocket around the guy's waist, start punching him in the back repeatedly. Just <laughs> like Drax. I'm like, <laughs> he goes down hard. I steal an ambulance. I'm back at the theater just in time for our team to decide we're going to time travel. <laughs> what? It was great. Everything I know about time travel comes from Back to the Future 1, Back to the Future 2, Back to the Future Part 3, Time Cop, Terminator 1, Terminator 2, Terminator Salvation, Terminator 3, I don't know why I'm going out of order, Terminator Genesis, Time Machine, Hot Tub Time Machine. Timeline, A Time to Kill. Joking, that one's just, it says time in the title. It has nothing to do with time traveling. Tampon, did I miss any time traveling movies? Austin Powers 2? Austin Powers 2. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I almost forgot the best part of the movie. Well, one of two best parts. Um, I mean, there's so many good parts, but these are the two best. Be right before my heart ripped in half, I, I, I saw on screen what I was waiting for the most. Tony Stark is dying in space. He's in a spaceship. It's been like 21 days. He's, he's weathered, he's skinny as shit, he doesn't look the best. I mean, I'd still, I'd still probably tap it, but he didn't look the best. Out of nowhere, like just when all hope is lost, he's hanging by a thread in the middle of space, which is like the biggest. No communication with the outside world. Zero chance of survival. Zero chance of being found. He's found by Captain Marvel! Yes! And all I'm thinking, besides the obvious, strong female lead! It's about time. Is, holy shit, how did she find him? He must have had like a communication beacon or something up that she could listen to. I don't know what her powers are. Maybe she has the power to like scan the galaxy for a heat signature of a person. I don't know. We don't find out how. It doesn't matter. Then she grabs a ship, flies him right back to Earth. How far away was he from Earth? How did she get him there so quick? It doesn't matter. Because it's Captain Marvel. We then get a riveting scene where she's with the rest of the team. Thor likes her. It's confirmed because she didn't move out of the way when his axe could have decapitated her. Because I don't know, maybe she can't die. Don't know what her powers are! The last thing I remember as I was being carried out of the theater by three or four elderly women is uh, her amazing haircut. They give her kind of the, the quasi mohawk that we saw in Captain Marvel, which actually looked pretty cool, and they, they ruined that and made it cooler by making it look fucking ugly as all hell. That's how I like my superheroes to look. Unattractive. While I was bleeding out in the hospital on the table, all I was thinking was how many more Captain Marvel scenes can there possibly be to make this movie even better? And apparently the answer was none until the way end, which is when we get to my second favorite part where she comes back, uh, kind of a deus ex machina situation, blows up a giant ship, takes out a few army soldier guys. I mean, she can just fly through people. They're don't know what her power is. She's like a, she's like the sun, I think. She can just like blow through everything. Like she could have taken like 10 minutes and just wiped them all out quick. I mean, come on, save us some time here. Uh, no, she goes one-on-one -on -one with Thanos. Does a pretty good job of kicking his ass. That was it, then she leaves. Not before though, we get the all-female superhero cast lined up, slow motion, kicking ass. It's not pandering. It's not cringy as all fuck. I wish the whole movie was like that, but it wasn't. I like that the time traveling in the movie, it made absolutely zero fucking sense. I also like that people that previously had been seen getting even close to a stone would melt or like instantly disintegrate. Guardians of the Galaxy 1, I believe. And now we just have Hawkeye carrying it around. Like he's tossing it in the air. He might've put it in his mouth at one point, shoved up his ass at one point. Doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want with these stones. Pop them off the arm, flip them around. The lack of consistency is what makes this so 
palatable. Like in Avengers 1, when Loki came to Earth with all of his bad dudes, the, the Chikara, or whatever they're called, the Jupacabra, or whatever they're called, uh, to rain hellfire down on the cities, and Nick Fury says, okay, we have to assemble this team, this ragtag group that I've gotten together, starting, of course, with the first Avenger, Captain Marvel. But he forgets to call her, for some reason, doesn't mention her to any of the characters. He's just like, keeps her in his back pocket too. Save her for later, I guess, when the next time that the Earth is on the brink of destruction. Um, but then he doesn't use her later either in Age of Ultron or Civil War or any time at all. She's just not, not on the radar. She's like a be all end all situation sort of a thing, I guess, even though they were be all end all situations. Consistency's great. I love it. I love that we included this character last minute. It's like introducing Superman to the DC after like 17 films have gone by and he's just like, yo, I can do everything and I'm here now. I'm not going to say anything bad about Disney because I'm contractually obligated not to. I'm a little upset what happened to my Black Widow. I'm a little upset what happened to my Scar Joe. He's killed by my Prince Hawkeye. Uh, Self-sacrifice, of course, because she's a princess and I love her. But I'm... I'm not gonna, I, I'm not, this is so stupid, I'm not gonna do it. <sighs> move on, Khaleesi, move on. <laughs> Kill my scar job! emotionally drained when when Black Widow died. Like, they show her like free fall to her death and then Hawkeye's reaction and I'm like okay come away now. And then they show her body like smashed to the ground in blood. It's so stupid. It's so stupid that this upset. I'm gay. I'm gay. Mom? <laughs> Mom? Hello? She hung up again. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Seeing the struggles that our team went through was excruciating for me, okay? That's the bottom line. I, I love, let's talk about the fun stuff. Okay, Son tons, of, tons of callbacks. Captain versus Captain, okay? Hey, I can do this all day. And they're kicking ass and they're throwing the shields and oh my God, I, I masturbated like three times in three minutes. Like a minute of masturbate. It was like, boom, done, boom, done. Got there. We see Loki again. We see Gamora. She's back. It's not the same one though. So she and Star-Lord have some catching up to do, <laughs> to say the least. We get one scene with them. It's really touching. She kicks him the balls twice. Uh, I mean, it's funny. Um, it was a little oddly timed because they're in the middle of a war. There's a, like a battle destroyer that shoots like lasers and missiles down and they throw up some shields and I don't think any, anybody died. Nobody died, they all lived. Like missiles come down all the time and everybody lives. Like Hawkeye is like just in a regular, uh, you know, some leather, he's got a bow. I mean, I know, I know the superheroes, but could you put on a fucking Iron Man suit? It really makes no sense at this point. Like Tony is not the only one that can wear it. His wife's in one, Pepper Potts is in one. Throw a fucking Iron Man suit on Scarlet. Bucky's just got a machine gun and a metal arm. He's like, uh, I could use a little little help here. I could maybe throw out a Black Panther suit or an Iron Man suit or whatever you have lying around. I love seeing Mantis again. I'm sure she was super helpful in the war. What the fuck would she have done there? That's like throwing Peter Parker's best friend in the war. What's he gonna do? Like he just like pulls out a computer, starts typing on the keyboard. He's playing Fortnite because that was a fun little Easter egg in the film. Fat Thor was lit. 
the big Lebowski, the big Thorbowski. Come on, he was awesome. I love that they used him the whole film and not just for a joke for one scene. Yes! Scientific Hulk. Oh my God. Look at that Hulk. <laughs> Subscribe. He was everything! Infinity War sets this character up perfect because Tinos kicks the living shit out of Hulk. Hulk is scared. He runs away like a little bitch. Remember I talked about this in my previous Avengers episode? I don't want to fight. Tanos is mean to me. I'm scared of him. And so this was the perfect opportunity to see Hulk finally Hulk out. It's been since like the first Avengers where we really saw him powerful and kicking ass. This was the time to shine. And they didn't, which I love, which is great. Subverted my expectations of what I wanted. Gave me a scientific punchline instead. Awesome. Ruffalo's really done wonders with this character over the years. He's definitely the strongest part of this team. Who else is just a tad excited for Asgardians of the Galaxy? Come on. Old Captain America coming back. He got to be with his bride. He got to be with his best friend, live a life together. It was beautiful. It was touching. And he gave his shield away. He passed on the badge of honor. The new Captain America goes to Falcon. The guy who has a quasi Iron Man suit, but is still very much open to be shot because there's not metal surrounding him. So it's like, like you're half in, just go all the way, get an Iron Man suit, you know? But whatever, he's got a shield now. It's cool. And Bucky's in the back, like just a tear trickles down. Like, thanks, dick. Oh my God, I almost forgot about that best fucking part. Captain America picks up the hammer. Yes! Thor is, is fighting for his life against Thanos. And he's, he's got him on the ropes. Like Thanos is like, I'm fucking gonna kill you with your own ax. That's how much of a bitch you are now. Even though last time you were like badass. Now you're a bitch again. And he's pushing it into his chest. And Thor's like, oh, I used to be so much cooler in Ragnarok. And then out of nowhere, hammer hits Thanos in the face. And then you're like, Waiting for Thor to bring the hammer back, but he goes, Ooh. Captain America grabs it. Dun, 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 dun. And he's like, and he, and he can control lightning. He's like a god of thunder now. So Captain America's kicking ass. He, he somehow knows how to use the, the hammer better than Thor does, even though Thor is like thousands of years old or whatever. But it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It was awesome! Thinking about anything in this film for more than like a minuscule of a second will kill you. Your brain will blow out of the side of your ear, literally. And I know, because that happened to me. Right after, let me try. Cottage, can you just cut that? I'll do it, I'll do it again. I can do this more professionally. Right after Tony Stark died, <laughs> right after he died, my brain actually blew through my ear because I was thinking about all the time travel stuff and how none of it really made any sense at all. And so, you know, I'm like, I can make it through the end of this movie. And I'm like pushing the brain back, I'm like trying to get it in there. And I'm like, just a little bit longer. And they're dragging me out. These old hags are dragging me out. And I'm fighting them off. They were the same ones that took me out before. And then I managed to hit one in her false jaw and she falls down, probably dead. I mean, she's old. She was already on life support as it was. Uh, the other three though, they got me out. The Golden Girls, Blanche, you know, throws me into her car, her old Geo Metro. They drive me to the hospital. Uh, I have no idea what's going on. I presume a funeral's happening in Tony's name. They're gonna probably put his chest heart thing out on a reef, throw it out there. We'll see the kid from Iron Man 3 in the crowd. Captain Marvel, of course, on the steps by herself. Stoic as fuck! I wanna put a baby in her! But I bet if my penis got even close to her, it would melt away because she's made of the sun, I think. I don't know what she's made of. I don't know where her powers are. Can she die? Doesn't matter. As my brain's lying on the table and the doctors are pissed at me because this is the same hospital and I, I put like five people in the morgue already. They are just screaming hysterical. So after a few minutes of lollygagging, I finally, <laughs> he does like three flips into a bunch of stethoscopes. I don't know why they had like a bunch of stethoscopes in a case there. Although I did always wonder like, where do they get the stethoscopes? I drag myself back to the theater in the auditorium, up the chairs. There's like a, a, like a pool of blood behind me. Someone's walking out to get popcorn slips. 
breaks his arm. He's out there like, and like, get over it, dude. Why are you leaving right now? There's like four minutes left of the movie. And I'm happy to say, I thought it was great. I loved it. I thought it was great. I loved it. I'm gonna go see it again. And then probably like six or seven more times. Actually, I think I'm gonna see it 3,000 times, because that's what Tony Stark said to his daughter. Through a hologram that he pre-recorded because he died. <laughs> Cringe crew, sound out in the comments. Let me know what you thought about Avengers. I thought it was the best movie yet in the MCU universe. They just keep getting better. And I want to see the all-female spin-off. I want to see a Mantis movie. I'd like to see her perspective during that war, honestly. Love to know what she did. Thanks for watching, everybody. And now excuse me while I daydream about Captain America's ass a little bit longer. It's America's ass. Could you imagine my my Khal Khaleesi Grimes? No, no, it's, it's funny. It's fine. Nerd alert! I'm super pumped! To talk to you some more. So make sure to subscribe to The Cringe, which is at Adam Does Movies on YouTube. You can check out more of The Cringe if you like what I'm doing, and I think you do. Take care. It's like I'm leaving, but I'm not. <laughs>